Oh, my name is Jose. Jose, sorry, just one second. Jose, tell me what the gospel is, man. <laughs> like, how were you saved, Jose? How was I saved? Yeah. Tell me yours and experience. You gotta say my mom. Your mom? Yeah. What does the, what does the Bible say about becoming a Christian? Do you know? I mean, like, um, personally, I haven't been, like, an active Christian as myself as much as I would like to be. Okay. Are you a good person? I like to think I am. You like to think you are? Like oh, man, that's terrifying, bro. Well, you told me five minutes ago, I'm a good, I think I'm a good person. I like to think. You like to think I'm a good person, and then you told me later that you're a lying, adulterous murderer. To serve justice, exactly. So now let's take that, and let's juxtapose that up against God, right? So God is a judge, and you are a lying, adulterous murderer, right? But you say, I'm a judge, I'm a good person. I've, you know, I have lied, and I have hated someone, and I have looked at women in lust. I've done those things, and I know your law tells me not to do those things. I know it's a sin for me to do those things, but God, I'm a good person. If God let you go to heaven based upon that, would he be a good judge or a bad judge? I really don't think so. <laughs> He'd be a bad judge. Because a, a judge is his responsibility to uphold justice, bro. So look, he's about to slam the gavel down and send you to hell. Because that's what you deserve. That's what I deserve. That's what Troy deserves. That's what we deserve, right? But instead of doing that, Jesus Christ steps in and says, I'll take the entire punishment for him, for me, for her, for her, for him. I'll take the punishment on my shoulders on the cross. I'll take the judgment that's deserved for him and me and her and him. By how he served our sins when he Exactly, exactly. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he died on a cross, a thieves cross for us. for us. When we think about the fact that the penalty that he paid was for a sin that I committed, and the sins that'll be committed in 2020, if Christ hasn't come back yet, and the sins that were committed in 1820. Those sins were paid for fully on the cross. All of God's wrath and judgment was poured out on the Son. And those that repent and believe on the gospel are saved. But if you reject the gospel, you're rejecting the work that Christ did on the cross. That means that the work that Christ did on the cross wasn't efficacious for you. It wasn't, it wasn't beneficial for you. So have you repented and turned and believed on the gospel? I have always heard of it, but now, to tell you the truth, I really never thought anything of it. Okay. Well, let me tell you today, bro, that today is your day. Today. If God came down and judged you right now, and you haven't repented and turned to Christ and obeyed the gospel, bro, you're going to go to hell forever. For eternity. You'll be ripped apart piece by piece. And let me tell you something. The God that does that to you is a good God. That's a righteous God. But He's also righteous enough to give you a go-between a mediator, somebody that can step in and not allow you to go to hell forever. It's your choice. Like, you can repent and turn to Jesus. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing about the, this whole message is all about Christ. And Jesus, there's, a, there's one about Jesus Christ. So, I mean, we're here trying to save babies, for sure, man. That's a good thing to do. Let's save some babies, man. But, man, God loves you, and He loves you enough to send this crazy bearded white guy from Omaha, Nebraska to come and talk to you. <laughs> and that bearded white guy from Aurora. <laughs> so here's what I want you to do, man. I, I'm, we're not going to pray a prayer or anything. We're not going to hold hands. But I know you got a Bible at home, right? What? You got a Bible at home? I do. It's in Spanish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you speak Spanish or English yeah, mostly? Yeah. I'm fluent. Fluent so, in both? Yeah, but I usually speak English. You got a smartphone on you? Actually, yeah, I have my iPhone on me. Right? Cool. You got a Bible app on there? I do not. <laughs> cool. Here, you, Pull up Google for me real quick. So there you go. You're right there, man. Here, just touch, touch, touch right there and type Romans or right there, Romans one. I'll replenish you, Virgil, if you do. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do, bro. You got it going, Romans one. I want you to start reading Romans one, bro. And when you get home, or even when you're walking around, if you go to BibleGateway.com or any of the sermon audio, you can listen to it audibly, right? Start listening to Romans 1, because Romans 1 is Paul's letter to the church in Rome, and, and he's exhorting them to good action, and it's one of the things that I want you to do today. Can you do that, man? Yeah, I'll do it. Cool, bro. You've heard the gospel, man. I appreciate you talking with me, dude. You, got any, you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Thanks for stopping by. No let me let me give you one of these too, bro. It's got a cool website in the back there. All right. All right. All right. All right, man. Thanks for stopping, bro. All right. You too, man. Thank you.